I'll be speaking on what I've captioned practical lessons from the issues of life. And I'm sure you know if you're a Nigerian, you know we have too many issues we are battling with. In fact, as at the time I was preparing for this meeting, what happened in Shokoto had not happened. So, um, and uh, when it happened, I could relate to some extent because I think I spent a little over 10 years of my life in a place in Lagos called Mile 12. And if you live in Mile 12, it's not different from you living in Kano, living in Maiduguri, or you are living in Shokoto. And you know, there are a lot of things that the Word of God has told us as Christians, but many times we think some of those things are not feasible. At times we think they are not realistic. And as are many times we want to justify certain things that we want to use as an excuse for disobeying God. For example, in the book of Hebrews 12, 14, Hebrews 12, 14, said something about following peace with all men. I know many times it looks like is that really feasible? And you know the way the word of God is structured is such that if we use our brain many times it looks as if some of these things are not really feasible. My mentor will say that there are a lot of things we want to do as Christians. And because we want to justify ourselves, we, we begin to say things like, the fact that I'm a Christian does not mean I'm stupid. How many of us are familiar with that statement? You know, we say it every time. And he said, and many times when we are saying that, you want it to look like if you're a Christian, you don't want people to take advantage of you. You want it to look like you are in control of your reasoning. He said, but unfortunately, the original Christianity will make people to take advantage of how do you explain where Jesus said if somebody slaps you on the right you turn the left because there are so many things that you know one of the things major lessons for me that's the most frightening of the story of what happened in Shokoto is that if after that woman was killed or after that lady was killed God will now say that all these guys were wrong and because they were wrong she was killed in a most annoying way. She wasn't supposed to be killed. And as a result of that, you can enter into heaven. Maybe I wouldn't have been so afraid. I would have said, okay, it's okay. <laughs> but unfortunately, from the God I know, from the word of God I know, that will never happen. In fact, I told somebody, no, I mentioned it in church last Sunday. I said that person that they were even putting the picture that was the one that killed the lady. If he gets born again today, he's going to help. That's the sad part. Whether we agree with it or we don't agree with it, whether it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. But unfortunately, God does not need our own input to forgive anybody. I think I told us here years ago when Shinorambo came to minister in my church during Let's Go Fishing, and one man was sitting beside me. That man came with so much anger. I can't forget him. He's an evil man. So when he saw me concentrating, listening to him, because I actually even came for that meeting because I wanted to see that how can Shinorambo, that was a criminal, be converted? I wanted to see that, okay, we heard so much about this guy, we never knew him. So that man so I was concentrating now asked me. He said, You are listening to this guy Sam. So I now look at him. I was like, Why are we here before that? You are now asking me a question like this. He said, Have you ever witnessed this guy's operation before? That the day I jammed this man in Maryland, that it is God that saved me. God cannot forgive him. <laughs> he shouted in, on the crusade down, jump. I said, sir, in as much as I understand what you are trying to say, God doesn't need your permission 
or my permission to forgive anybody. And even, in fact, what frightens me the most is that most of the time, those people that are extremely bad are the most useful to God. You see, most of us that think we are not too bad, we are already bad. And many times, God cannot really use us like that. I'm thinking from experience too. You know many times when you say that I'm not too bad, look at the apostles. I say this every time too. We have Peter. Did Peter commit any crime? Did James commit any crime? Did John commit any crime? But look at Paul. Paul didn't see Jesus face to face. He saw him via revelation. And yet, he wrote, in fact, you cannot put any meaningful gospel today without making references to the writings of Apostle Paul. He was bad and he was clear. The Bible says that when Stephen was being stoned, he was the one that supervised the king. So you see that, and that is why our theme for this month, repentance and grace, cannot be overemphasized. Because the moment somebody repents, God himself is trying very hard to remember your past. But most of the time, we don't. We regret, we don't repent. But if you want to understand the real meaning of repentance, you go into the Yoruba Bible to find out what did the Bible call repentance in the Yoruba Bible? Because if you wrote with me, what how do you explain that in English? Can somebody help me? What is the Runuku Wada literally speaking in English? Two things. Somebody that thinks deeply, then as a result of the thinking, he decides to change. That is repentance. And that is where original Christianity starts from. And that is why for us as Christians, we can't, you know, when I, I, I learned that it's repentance, I was like, wow, that's, that's very profound. That's very destructive for us. Because that's what makes God to judge anybody. That's what God makes, God uses to look at you. That's why the Bible will say, don't judge or condemn anybody. I remember that day as we were sitting down listening to General Rambo, some area boys, it was at Ojota, that Ojota part, that program held. Some area boys came. One particularly asked me that, ah, is it true that Sino Rambo that is preaching? That Sino Rambo that killed a lot of people? I said, yes. You could see that it really touched the man. And that is why God is interested in such person. Because the people Sino Rambo can convert, me and you cannot convert. Even the best general overseers cannot convert. That's why I don't judge anybody. Because my experiences, your experiences are not the same. And God will still use everything to fulfill that his own purpose. Like I would normally say, if no matter how much I want to try, I'm counseling you and we are talking, and you now tell me that you have killed five people before. And I'm like, human being or? And you say human being. No matter how much I want to pretend to be a man of God, like, ah, you have killed five people. You didn't even stop at one. You didn't stop at two. You don't try. You know, because the human part will come. Because I've not, have I even killed a chicken before? So, my ability to understand whatever you are trying to say, I doubt it. But for Shinorambo, somebody told him I killed seven people. And I don't think God can forgive me. Shinorambo said, which seven? Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Or another seven? He said seven. And Shinorambo laughed. And he said, in operations that are not major, seven people are the people we waste. Not in the main operation. As the people that we just say, ah, only. And his voice will answer them. And tell me, how many of those people will not be in hellfire? They didn't even prepare to die. And that man that killed them, that supervised their killing, is on his way to heaven. No wonder Jesus said, the first shall be the last. And the last shall be the first. That's why you don't Condemn anybody can change. The moment the person changes, you just start be wondering that like, how can you know he spoke so much that day. She never told us a lot of things that, that even me, I was wondering that how did God arrive at this decision to forgive this man? 
Because when you come and say that, oh, it's because of this reason, I killed him. There's another man of God. His name is called Pastor K.J. Hamilton. He was one of the best boys of Ella, and In fact, they now told us that the day he came, I was listening to the administration, they said, when you hear Fela say, I'm sure some of you who, even if you don't listen to Fela, but you used to hear Fela, you know there's a difference between listening to the music and hearing. When you hear, K, 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 G, K, K, Ha, K, G, K, K, that is Pastor K, G, H, He's the only boy of Fela that, he was so crazy, that Fela will now be singing for him. And today is a minister of the gospel. He told us how he killed a baby with a gun. That one thing I will let go and finish it. In fact, the woman that was interpreting for him is a mother. So when he said, I blasted the head, the woman like a leap browser. He said, is that interpretation of the head? I mean, the motherless thing that the woman could not interpret is that head. Because even we were shocked. He said he broke out the gold and he was telling the woman, he said because they had information that the woman had pure gold. And the woman was not going to bring out the gold. And like this woman, I will kill this your baby. And it, it, she, 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 she thought it was a joke. So when he said he brought out the gun, even those of us sitting down, we didn't believe that's what he was going to say. So when he said he killed that baby, in fact, it took that woman a while for her to continue with interpretation. So how do you explain that? And the man is on his way to heaven. He told us a whole lot of things. Killed a lot of people. Told us that in America, he had two girlfriends in each of the states. America has about 50 states or something. So you begin to ask yourself, some people have gone far with the devil. I told somebody, if somebody like you go to hell, it's unfair. My pastor, Pastor Detola, will say that this, if you are going to hell, let it be that even when the devil sees you, you'll be like, you try. You try. You try. You represented me. That's one thing I like about you. And if you say that, say, can you imagine? You wanted to steal money. Then I said, how much is taking you to hell? He said, 10,000 naira. Why? Why? Why will you do that? You cannot steal one million pounds. You cannot steal one trillion pounds. You cannot do something meaningful that the devil will be like, oh, this guy is <laughs> a, a correct disciple. But now you are now. So you see that people like that. They were so bad. They were so terrible. He told us. He said the day he separated in the shrine that they used to worship is this some God or something. So they were all trained to be atheists. They don't believe God. So it was when he had an encounter. He was taking marijuana. When marijuana wanted to bust his ass. And he told us of a guy that came to preach to him. He said he was, he was inside his hotel room. The boy knocked. He came out. And the guy was you see, some people have suffered for this gospel. I'm sure some of us will say we go for evangelism, we won't come. That guy came to knock on Pastor Katie. Pastor Katie, the only God knows how many marijuana he has been on that day. So the guy now said, Ah, good afternoon, sir. He was like, Good afternoon. What are you looking for? He said, I came to share the gospel with you. Pastor Katie said, You now look at it that your, your God must be a wicked God. Of all the people inside this hotel, you cannot think. And he said, He beat. He beat hell out of that guy. The guy ran away. Funny enough, the guy still came back. And like I used to say, see many of us, we are just, we are just, I don't want to use the word jokers. Hmm. You know, when the Bible says, you know, we quote scripture, we don't even understand what we are quoting. You know, I was supposed to say somewhere, I bear my body. And some of us, it's only when we have bad dreams. You now wake up. And I said, like, oh, I bear my body, the mask of Jesus. I'm sure Paul himself would be vexed. There were physical marks when Paul was talking. He had suffered for the gospel. So Pastor Katie said this guy came back the second time. But this time around, of course, he now applied wisdom. He came with tracks and put it underneath his room, this the, the door. The day his heart was going to burst, so something or someone told him, which obviously was the Holy Spirit, that go and pick that trap. And that was what he picked. And that was the beginning of his conversion. If I went away to Gokul and I found where he was actually playing guitar with a uh, fella, and I look at the same man, I was like, the transforming power of this God 
we can never understand. And that is why he, 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 he gives us the responsibility to go all out. To go and explain this life. Practically speaking, and also with our life. But the question is, are we actually learning from things that are happening around us? The man said something that I love very much. He said, the 21st century Christian is not going to be those that cannot read or write. You know when I was growing up, the definition of an illiterate is somebody that cannot read or write. It's no longer so. You can be a PhD holder and you are fully illiterate now. Because the man, according to the man, which makes a lot of sense, he said, but if you don't have the capacity to continue to learn, unlearn, and relearn, then you are illiterate. That is the kind of world we are living in. That's why to raise a child many years ago is different from now. It's when we are growing up that we say that to have access to what you call pornographic materials, you need to belong to some very serious demonic friends cacos in secondary school. They are the ones that will tell you where you can get what they call mojo in those days. But now, just with your telephone, so this is the time you're telling your 10 year old child that when you are 12, when your 10 old child can actually mentor you. <laughs> I remember the story, the, the Christian story, the girl, Christian girl story. One of my ladies said, when it was when she was reading the story, this is a lady that has, I think, four children, is it three or four? That she was seeing the cowgirl style for the first time. So it was after she was reading the story. And she saw that they said the style the girl was using was cowgirl. A mother of four who has been married for about 10 years now had to start googling that what is cowgirl? I said that is the difference between this generation. I said that will tell you the level of work you have to do. The devil is not smiling with us. The social media has a lot of you know advantages alongside its advantages. And if you don't wake up, and you know, the, the, the ladies, um, the girl's mother initially was speaking some grammar at the beginning. Just like a normal parent, like I would say, a lot of parents, if you go and ask them, write about your child. And let's assume you write. Now go to the school of that child. Ask the best friend of the child to write about the child and see the contrast. Because the real one is the one you get in school. The one uh, daddy is writing is the impression the child chose to give to daddy or mommy. And that is why we need to understand why the Bible says, train your child, Proverbs 22 says, in the way that it should go. So that when it's grown, it will not depart. It contains a whole lot. Even some ministers of God came to understand that, you know, <laughs> I heard a story. A great man of God that preaches in the five continents of the world. His last son was in secondary school. So he got home. I think he was going to fly out again. He entered the house. He was going to prepare to travel. So he greeted the last son. So that you know the way your son will greet you when he's like, oh, daddy, good afternoon, sir. And he has not been around for two weeks. So the man was shocked. So the man was like, sorry, am I missing something? Have you seen me recently? I have not seen you recently now, but that one is not news. <laughs> so the pastor was like, I don't get what is not news. He said that he said, you want to go and preach, go and preach now. Which one is all these questions? Ah, you know, this is I'm talking of one of the frontline ministers of the gospel in this country. So that was when the man knew that there's a big problem here. He now said, Come, let us talk. The boy was like, Daddy, please, please. Just go and preach. You know you have been called to save the world. Just go and save them. <laughs> and just leave me alone. You see, you see, this is my life. Just leave it for me. Then the man knew that, ah, no, no, no. I'm in serious trouble. This is the first person that you understand the gospel. What nonsense gospel am I preaching? My children are not understanding it. And that was when they said the man of God, when the son was true with him. Nobody told him to call that country and be wherever I was going that you will not be available. This is a three-day program. Don't Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
now took the boy to one of the university uh, in nearby town to go and just have a quiet time just discussing. That was when it occurred to the man that the energy that he has been using to preach the gospel he has not done the same at the home front. Don't create time to listen. A lot of parents create more time in giving instruction. And you can see the difference in this generation and our own generation. How can I face my mom now? My mom will ask me a question and I will say, why? What will happen after that why? You will never forget in your life. She will first of all to confirm that. What did you just say? How can, you can't even repeat it. By the time she's telling you, what did you just say? You already understood. So you just say that nothing, nothing, nothing. Because your brain would have reset. Because what will happen? But you can see that the child in this generation will just tell you that why. Money why. And if you are going to raise them, that time cannot work now. You have to create that time. But unfortunately, a lot of people are not understanding. And what we are not doing at the home front, social media is doing for us. I remember uh, Pastor Demola Daniels was in my church, I think in January. And he was telling us that if your children are having Davido, etc., as their mentor, and you are speaking in tongues in church, you are in trouble already, you don't know. What are we talking about? And that is the reality of our world. Our children are being mentored by people who are not godly. And we, quoted or unquoted, we are claiming spirituality. So we really need to understand that all these things happening because a lot of people will suddenly become emergency counselors. In several times I'll be talking extensively more about Sister Osina Jiku, but that's a story that touched me in no small measure. When a story happened, everybody suddenly became emergency marriage counselors. The covenant of life is greater and higher than the covenant of marriage. Which is very true. But like I will explain later. My own problem is, if it's the married people saying that, I will know that we are learning. But it's the singles that are saying, meaning that they are still not learning. What's your own business with the covenant of life is greater than the covenant of marriage? What have you learned from the story? Singles are more interested in shouting, if your marriage is not this thing, leave the marriage. Are you happy? The question really is, instead of you to be mapping your own strategies of not to, not to fall into that kind of issue, you are analyzing what is not supposed to be analyzed. Everybody became, somebody will have gone pick a message of a man of God that said that a child, a normal child should grow up within the home of a father and a mother, which is a confirmed truth. People will now start saying, it's the teachings like this. That make people like Sister Osinati not to be able to open up. Like, seriously? Okay, so we should now teach that everybody start divorcing. So we really need to understand that when things happen, what are the things we are supposed to learn from it? Because if we don't learn from it, what are we talking about? If our own children we have to repeat our own mistakes. What is the usefulness? Like I used to say, you are a man. You know that you were a womanizer. In those days, I don't want to believe you are still now. Because if you are still now, you are listening to me. Then you need to repent before we leave there. But I want to assume that, I want to give you benefit of that, that you have changed. And you are a father today. You have a daughter. So, in what way are you using the experience? And you discover that it's men like that that now overly react. Instead of them to spend quality time to talk to their girls. When the girl now says that, Daddy, my friend is having a party. Daddy cannot process. You see, the information that he's getting is different from what the girl is passing. Daddy knows that in those days when they enter past, any girl they jam, her life will not be the same again. So even though this one is still 
innocent. And instead of him to use his own experience to teach her and to guide her, you not be like, ah, go to my in here. Let me see you leave this house. Fatico, party. And the girl is wondering, this is my friend. This is not a bad party. Shut up. What do you know? And already you are putting something in that child. Because all of those noise are not necessary. You were supposed to come to a level to discuss with her. The same strategy you use in getting the mom. You need another style of that strategy now. But a lot of people don't do that. If you have a female daughter and she's not talking to you when the boy tells her, you're already failing, sir. Because you are not even in the right place to counsel. I was talking with teenagers in my church some time ago. Girls of 10, 11, 12. Within this hour, in my own church, our teenagers. And I don't know why I asked that question. In fact, that question makes me confused. I mean, I've been in the public speaking for 15 years. I became confused with teenagers, not big people. Because when I asked them, how many of you here, if something happens to you, you will talk to daddy or mom? All of them were just looking at me. And I, and I promised them, I said, now listen, if we discuss anything here, daddy and mommy will not hear. So talk to me. And all of them, all ALL said, neither mommy nor daddy will be told. None of them is older than 12 years. That's when I was not asking myself later that, come, what was even the purpose of this question? That what would a 12 year old be going through that she cannot even open up? You know, I became confused. That's to let you know that a lot is happening at that level. So if you don't come down as a parent, and these are things that you are supposed to even learn and know about before you become a parent, so that we understand how to have a relationship. Some of believers do it well. All we need to do is to adapt those styles and use it as a Christian. You will see some, when I was in school, one boy was toasting a girl. His friend now saw the dad driving. So that friend thought that man has not seen the son where he was toasting a girl. So he now thought he wanted to go and um, lie to the father to tell the father that so so person is not around. They are just back here so that they will go and look for him. The man now told him, I've seen my son in middle door. That's when the guy got to know that, sir. He said, well, he's open one girl there and I know that girl will agree for him. That guy wanted to fix. <laughs> You know, you like you are even thinking the man is a responsible father. <laughs> Only for the man <laughs> to be showing you that look, that boy, now me producer. And the man says that you are free to say no then. <laughs> so now just imagine that kind of a man. That kind of a boy eventually, if he sees any girl, if he does any girl, if he's dressed again, he will come home to get advice. Why? Because the environment is conducive. And of course, the man can, you can't give what you don't have. Man. So if you cannot give what you don't have, tell me how will the man be able to give the right advice? But my own problem is that those that have the right advice, which is Christians, we are too busy. We are too holy. We are too righteous to be detailed to find out what is happening. And the world we are living in now is a very fast world. I was somewhere one day, a 10 year old girl, and you see, that other boy was like five years old. So the boy was looking worried. And the next thing the girl said, keep me off balance. You know what she said? See, why are you looking like this? Have you impregnated somebody? <laughs> 10 year old to five year old, I'm telling you through life. I was expecting the boy to even react in a funny way. The boy now smiled. He said, No, that's not the problem. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, that was the day I knew that we are joking in this generation. What social media? Ah, you know, I was just confused. I think the boy asked, not fully, for you to know that the boy 
understand that question. You are not going to tell the girl that, ah, what nonsense, what, can't you think of something meaningful to ask? Only for the boy to respond and say, no, 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 it's not even that. I was like, eh, it's not that. How do you know the meaning of that? Five year old boy, this boy clocked five years like few weeks ago. I'm not telling you something I don't know. So you can imagine, you are dealing with those kind of children and you are saying that, okay, when you grow up a bit, I will tell you. And the child is looking at you that you, you will know who will tell you. You see, because the devil is on rampage, like I said earlier. And we need to understand. Because it is only Christians that have the solution. But we see that the kind of conviction the other side they have, she doesn't even have it. That's what I've always said. You can imagine those guys that killed the world. Something that happened on the WhatsApp. And they were just like, no. And I've, I've experienced it before when I was in school. There was a Christian drama on campus. And they did a drama. What was the drama? They narrated how religion cannot take you to heaven. So a pastor came. And the pastor, they were judging him on the final day. And they said, my friend, upon all your preaching, go to hellfire. And the pastor carried his Bible in the drama. Uh, in Babalao too, the same thing happened. Unfortunately for that Christian fellowship, it was when the Muslim brethren were coming from the mosque. That was when they now saw somebody dressed like an Afar. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, it's the third person. They didn't know there was two others. So they were first wondering that, is this a Muslim program? Why is this person there? So they were now interested. Only for them to now see that air, that they now said because of something, something you enter air fire. That was how they mobilized that you people are mad. <laughs> so you want to make fun of us. You know, they didn't understand the full story. And that was how a friend of mine was part of that fellowship because he was the one that was telling me the story. When he came back, I was like, ah, I thought the program was supposed to end much later. He said, evil pastor don't run away. <laughs> Because the moment they bombarded that place, everybody ran. You see, for me, the lesson is, it's not even about, are they supposed to be like that? How do people have a serious conviction about their belief and they are ready to kill? And we, that have the original, we are not even ready to live for it. Nobody is saying that the Christians should die. But we, we, we can even tolerate anything. It's a Christian that will tell you that yeah, you are free. You are free. It's a, it's a free world. Everybody has the rights. It's only a Christian that does that. When we are the ones that have the right attitude to life. Because Jesus didn't say, I am the best way. If Jesus had said, I'm the best way, it means there are many ways. But out of all the ways, I'm the best. But he said, I am the way. Meaning every other round leads to nowhere. So I'm asking us this morning, what are we learning from all these issues of life? Because if you don't come back to the point of our theme for this month, which is repentance, the Bible, I end with this scripture, it said, he that confess and forsake, he that covers his sins shall not prosper. For he that confess and forsake shall obtain mercy. And that's the word we abuse many times. Mercy is usually provoked when there are two things. The confession and the, conf and the forsaking. But you know what we do? We confess to commit. We commit to confess. We don't, we, that's why I say we regret. We don't repent. And until we get to the point of repentance, that is where true Christianity starts from. I'm appealing to you by the message of God. Don't take this as any just normal service. As far as I'm concerned, a lot of these issues we are supposed to be learning, whether it's the Deborah story, whether it's the Chris Landell story, whether it's the Star Sinatra story, what are you learning? Because the only reason why God has kept us alive, why we didn't die, or why we are not dead, is for us to learn. 
What are you learning that you want to apply? Let's bow down our heads. And let's begin to talk to God this morning. Father, I've heard your word. Father, come and help me. Father, come and make me a doer of your word. The Bible says that it's a doer of his word that is blessed. Not the hearer. Not the speaker. So I'm asking you, my brothers and sisters, you are under the sound of my voice. You know you are supposed to respond to what you have heard this morning. I would like my tiny first thing. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to solidify your relationship with the master. Please don't pretend to be praying when you are not praying. There is a need for response this morning. I would like you to raise up your hands. You want to give your life to Christ afresh? You want to rededicate your life to Christ? You want to solidify your relationship with the master? You don't want to go back the same way you have come. You don't want the death of Jesus Christ to be in vain. You don't want things to be said that, oh, after all said and done, my life is still a waste. I would like you to raise up your hand this morning so that we pray together. I don't have all the time. You don't want to go back the same way you have come. You know, the Bible says that Jesus said, whosoever is ashamed of me in the presence of men, will I be ashamed of the presence of my Father in heaven? So you are here. You are not, let me tell you, if you want to give your life to Christ, you want to dedicate your life to Christ, you have nothing to be ashamed of. If there's anybody that should be ashamed, it's somebody that should respond, that is pretending to be praying when the person is not praying. So if you want to respond, I want you to even not just raise up your hand, come to the front and let us pray together. My time is already fast spent. You want to rededicate your life to Christ. You don't want to go back the same way you have come. You want it to be on record that there is a turning point. I told us, how can she not rap be on his way to heaven? How can Pastor Casey have to be on his way to heaven? And those of us that are not too bad to be on our way to hell. Is that fair? Is that fair? So you want to give your life to Christ? You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Join me in front now. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasure. Join me in front.